Okay, it's 9, 10 p.m. It's all right, and I'm about to have myself breakfast. I've already done my cardio. We got a really busy, exciting day today. Um, specifically one meeting I'm really excited about. So you'll have to stick around and see what that's gonna be about. But I wanna show you guys what I am eating. Cause I, I feel, this is like the second day where I kind of feeling like I'm getting in a groove. You know, yesterday was uh, my first day feeling, like at the end of the day, I felt good, right? Um, like about everything, work, fitness, food, everything, I felt great. Um, like physically everything. So um, this is day two, keeping the streak. I did my morning cardio. Uh, I actually drove to Dynamic Fitness, which is like this gym, like three minutes down the road, I'd say, to do my cardio. Because for whatever reason, it's like it may be too early to uh, be picking up on a, like a recurring thing. I'd lost for a word there. But um, when I do cardio here in the morning at my house, it, it, it can be a little bit tougher for me just to like mentally go and click the start uh, versus like if I get, it's easier for me to get in my car and drive. There's something about that little drive that I really like. Um, it makes it feel like the old days where I used to have to go to a gym um, to do anything, which yeah, it's, so I've been going twice in a row now. Um, breakfast, I use one serving and I did weigh it. Like you can even see I got my scale right here. That's how you know it's real. Um, one serving of this butter. I know this isn't the best for my, oh, it's like one thing at a time, guys, you know, cutting this kind of stuff out, but I am still using it. So one serving of this, I can't believe it's not butter. Uh, two whole eggs and then th three egg whites and one serving of this chicken and maple sausage by Applegate. It's got seven fat, three carb, nine grams of protein, and I sauteed some onion and bell pepper before. So this is that meal, and I also got a coffee right here. Turn that off. That is breakfast. There's two things I forgot. Uh, because of my meetings today, I'm not going to be eating uh, like as frequently, which is no big deal at all. Like I don't ever care about meal frequency, but um, at least I can be prepared ahead and know like, okay, I don't want to put all of my carbs off until later in the day. So I'm choosing to have like 60-ish grams right now with three slices of the swirl bread. So learn how to be flexible with, um, with your meal timing, your macros, and accommodate like you're the boss, your, your um, commitments, your responsibilities, your work, your, your family, like what your, what your things are your things and find a way to make eating and, and or bodybuilding, like fitness, it has to work around your schedule. Like you set your schedule and then you put the shit around it. So I, I when I used to train clients, um, when I was an online trainer, you know, part of the questionnaire would, where I would ask everybody before they would come and work with me would be, how many, like in an ideal world, how many meals would you like to eat per day? Or how many times per day would you like to sit down and like eat? Uh, and a separate question, do you prefer to have one snack a day, two snacks a day? And what do you can like meals versus snacks? And ultimately it doesn't matter, but the point is whatever your preferences are, you can make progress like with uh, any amount of meals, any, uh, uh, really any frequency um, of meals that you want. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Calories in, calories out over a prolonged period of time is gonna either make you lose weight if you're in a deficit or if you're in a surplus uh, and you're eating more calories in your body, your maintenance you need, you're gonna slowly put on his weight, right? So uh, yeah, this sauce is also super good, but kind of expensive because it's black truffle infused, but it tastes great. Mm. Mm. Okay, we are back with a back and bicep workout today. Actually, yeah, back, shoulder, bicep, back day. Back day always turns into more than back day, <laughs> for me at least. Um, but honestly, I want to take the time while you guys watch this workout. I, I may like, I don't know, come in and out and touch on it a little bit. Um, I'll literally just let it play, like from the very beginning warm-ups all the way to the end. 
But um, I just want to kind of catch up with you guys because after getting home from Alaska, and that's sort of the last time I feel like I feel like I've been in tune with the channel and stuff. Um, I did eight videos in a row, like literally every other day, edited by myself, like filmed by myself. Like it was, I was really getting, and I was like, I don't know, I was doing commentaries and really just opening up to the camera and like, um, and in turn feeling really good about it. Like, um, and feeling really good, like in my life when I'm not filming. And, um, I think that's like a big thing that I was, I, I've been searching for like all of 2023 really i feel like um so much of that year was like trying to find a rhythm uh but more so like a rhythm where i'm not just burning myself out so much and a rhythm where i'm not just not burning myself out but i'm like i'm i'm content and like peaceful and kind of happy like here at home because and home, I mean, like here, literally, like in Houston, like Sugarland, like where I live, because I don't. A lot of this is just me sort of chatting, and there's other stuff I want to talk about on this video as well. So just so I don't get so deep into this topic, we are going to talk about um, some marketing stuff because I, at the end of the video, you're going to hear uh, some stuff that we've got potentially lined up with the Houston Rockets with Alpha Elite, which is like really, really dope. Um, and also some, a new sponsor that we just brought on Nick Walker. I'm going to talk about that a little bit, which is super exciting. Um, and just like some marketing changes we've been, made. I'm just going to catch up with y'all. Right. And it's also raining. So now it's kind of freaking out. So she may or may not be kind of in between my legs here. Um, just freaking out a little bit. Okay. So yeah. Um, I was really in a groove in Alaska and, like Heidi and I, even though we were in a, literally in a, an Airbnb, the size of this room, like, and we were, you know, you think we'd be on top of each other and all this stuff. Like it was, and we were sleeping on the floor cause like it was, it was warm. <laughs> like it was, we were very healthy. We were very like, the relationship was very good. We're very, I don't know, just men. And we we're still working and taking meetings and stuff and like getting all of our stuff done, but just doing it in a, in a much, I don't know. And it, it, but it also like when I, while I'm saying that it's scary for me to, I don't want to paint the picture of like Sugarland and my home here being this place where I can't like, I can't live that kind of peaceful life. Like I, I it's almost like I feel like I've built this place where I almost am forced to be surrounded by so much activity and so much like hyperact, like you just, you know, there's not really anywhere I can go here in this, you know, running to the gym or going like going to do cardio or just going even to work or going to like do a quick photo, like anything like really ends up becoming a lot more because like there's so many branches off of, if I go just to alpha land, it's like, I, there's so many people I pass out manager. There's, there's so much, but it's like, I guess I'm really going to deep dive into like how and why I'm kind of feeling like this stuff. But I think in my twenties, my late twenties, especially like it became more and more clear. I'm 30 right now, but, um, I feel like in my late twenties, it really became clear to me. Like I was very aware that I'm working at a pace that I am not, I do not want to keep up for long. I know I physically cannot keep this up for long. I know that I, in no world, in no shape or form do I want this for myself, but the true, like the harsh reality is I'm in it. I'm in this, I'm, I'm right here. And all I need to do is keep fucking pushing and, but not just pushing in like a dumb, just like, Oh, I'm just going to brute my brute force my way through these obstacles. But in a way that like I could focus on what can I, I what can I put my attention towards? that's actually going to like, give me my life back. And that was focusing on manage like managers right focusing on people that can actually like take some of my reporting like direct reports like off and, and create teams underneath them that's what really um i've been needing to do for so long and i wish i would have done i really i keep stressing that but like, i really genuinely that would have changed my life like um if i would have been able to 
but it's hard, man. It's hard when you're 20 something years old and you just don't know. And like the advice that you get, like I've, I've always had really great people advising me. It's just like though somebody's advising you, it may not be what they're, we're, we're in new territory. <laughs> you know, we are literally in this, like, I, I like to, I don't know. It's almost like, I like, I like to feel, I like to think that, you know, I've done pretty well for how old I am and stuff. Like I've always felt relative. I've always, even when I was like 18 or 17 or even 16, I was, when I was 15 before I could even drive with my license, like I was doing guitar lessons and I, I had always shit going on for me. So I always, because I did it for myself. So I always felt like I like was at least very, I was like on top of it. I was like, if you know, people may be ahead of me, but I'm doing everything I possibly can. Like I've always kind of felt like that for myself. Um, since like kind of getting into this motivation, see finding Greg Plitt and kind of my, my, you know, that like that, that was my idol. And kind of like when I got engulfed, when I got caught, I got bit by the, the bug in the gym, like I really got hooked. Right. That's when that addiction, like that, um, fitness just like, it became my life. And I don't know. Um, I guess it's just, uh, work has been so much the last few weeks here. Like, and I feel myself getting pulled back to the old me. And it, it's almost like I've, I've done so much evolving mentally. I feel like the last eight months or so that I'm much more aware of like asking and digging a little bit deeper with my own thoughts. And so, um, where am I going with this? I just, yeah, I got to find a rhythm here. Um, I can't like, like whenever the, like I've been having these huge work weeks and I've been actually feeling that stress come back. And like, I've also been off Adderall for almost, I'm like at five months, I think something like five months completely. And I went complete cold Turkey, um, with that after like a very long time being very like addicted to it. Uh, and so I guess it almost feels like I'm also reprogramming. I feel like my body's like reprogramming. It's sort of refinding, um, you know, and my, my 24 week prep, like that really did have a lot of effect on everything. Um, on like my gut on my, just my, my body, my body weight, uh, just how much water retention I was, I was, I was experiencing, um, you know, my blood pressure, just a lot of, and I'm getting blood where I feel like I'm really right now cleaning up, like, all of the mess I made in my twenties, <laughs> honestly, it's if, if I'm being honest with y'all, uh, and it's like really exciting to do so. And, um, like though I, I'm on this momentum, I guess I've just been feeling the last three weeks with the work. Um, it, it almost feels like I can't be this me that I'm like this new me that I'm loving. And like, I'm, I'm, you know, starting to, see what I could, how I could be living and stuff like that. And just like be a lot more at peace and filming a lot more. And like, I loved when I was on this eight video streak and like, I really love the version of me that's like that. But then when I can, when I come back, you know, to reality, it seems like it's almost like if I, if, if my door is shut, if I'm my CEO door is like shut when I'm away or is it, if it's a little open, it's like I'm finding the balance of, le- of opening that door too much and letting too much start coming to me be- because the truth is like when stuff comes to me, and I hear stuff like my initial instinct is to get like, to, uh, to go in. But now it's like I'm emotionally intelligent enough to realize like, hold on, don't go in because if you go in, you're going to fuck everything up that you've just that you've actually been letting build up. Right. And like develop. So I guess it's just like, I don't know, I'm in this weird funk and it's shown because I just, after eight uploads, I went and then getting home, I literally was only able to, I, I, the amount of times I tried filming a video and tried getting in a groove was and just failing and getting frustrated and like, and just like cursing and like, like just like, fuck, it's getting so like, I'm like, why can't I just. I was literally just doing this so fluidly, so easily without thinking. Why is it so difficult? And it's, it, I think it's, it's a mixture of environment, the stress back home, the heavy workload and kind of picking up, which I expected the workload. And I, I, I obviously, I, I, I'm not bitch. I'm not complaining. I'm just, 
I'm trying to, at whatever level you're doing this shit, like the problems are still there. Um, and they feel the same. It's like the same amount of, I don't know. Um, and just being even more honest with you guys, this is, gonna, you know, yeah, I'm just going to say it. Like I've, I'm actually like considering like starting to actually look for a CEO, which is like a pretty crazy thing to say for me, like out, like to actually say that, but I'm considering starting to look for one. Um, but really I'm also just need to hone in on like what a chief operating officer would look like a COO. Um, because I feel right now I feel with a, with a, a COO, right handling a lot of the people part because like and a lot of those headaches off my plate that are kind of coming to me because I need to be able to open my door up if I want to be an effective CEO but I also can't be a full-on CEO which is like almost like almost micromanaging because I do have really strong leadership um and and be this like new me that I want to be um this me on YouTube this me like the, which in the me on YouTube is a real me <laughs> like um, but it's very, it's almost, it almost feels right now impossible for me to do both, but I know that what feels impossible now is just a space and time where like, I, I'm going to get through like the, the, um, uh, these like little struggles I've got. Cause next week, um, I should be able to actually finish all of these a lot or trim down most of these things that are, haven't really been consuming a lot of my brain power, but, um, Yeah. That's that. Um, next, I can maybe talk some, just some more exciting stuff because I, I'm not trying to be all like negative. This video, some um, more more business stuff because honestly, like the re I haven't been, you know, I've been doing a lot of business stuff, right? A lot of meetings. Um, one thing we're going to be doing differently this year with Alphalete that I'm, I guess, like this is sort of the public way for me to say it because we're actually completely done with all contract negotiations. We've officially trimmed down. Let me backtrack. Can we insert the, like the video where we made the big change? So we kind of made up this support code uh, thing. They're not getting discount. They're just supporting support code versus a discount code. So we are now officially making the change. We decided to eliminate the support code and switch everything over to discount codes. So customers are going to be happy, right? It may have been like a year and a half ago at this point, but a year and a half ago, everybody was doing uh, links, like, like, or sorry, we were doing uh, support codes. So all of our athletes, our entire team had support codes that would give uh, no discount to the customer when you check out, it'd be like, you know, code Guzman, no discount to the customer, but it would give credit to the athlete and let us pay them commission. Right. But, and we had like maybe 25 to 30 athletes. And then I decided to make a big, I made a huge decision and it's, it was not a bad decision. Like I don't regret the decision. Um, the, the decision was able to, you know, it, it did what I was hope was trying to achieve at the time, which was sort of a different goal. Um, I'm not afraid to say that, but we shifted to everybody having a discount code, which is one that's a huge shift. So actually the customer would get a discount, which would, but we didn't want to increase our pricing. So, you know, that's kind of an automatic, you know, 10% loss on any profit um, off the, you know, off the top. And then we pay the athlete 10% as well, um, which was, one, part one of the decision, but part two was we wanted to expand the team with these new codes. So it's like, okay, now we have these codes. Let's go ahead and let's go all out. Let's see what we could fucking do. Let's see what we could reach. And we ended up building that list of athletes from like 30 to like 120, <laughs> which with that, um, inside it's okay mom it's okay come here it's okay come here. she's scared guys she's scared it's all right oh it's okay it's okay
I know it's okay. Okay. It's all right, Mom. But um, so from 30 athletes to 120 athletes slash ambassadors slash like affiliates slash, you know, and that's the thing. We almost like let it get kind of loose in the sense of we have, you know, within that 120 people, you know, a chunk of them were exclusive to us. They had, you know, retainers uh, and they could only promote Alfley as their like fitness brand. Um, and then we also had another category, which was, it, this was never like written in the handbook. It's not like we had, you know, there's this group, there's this other group and there's this other group. It was more so like a, a lot of the athletes internally didn't know which one they, you know, it was kind of like, how come they get to do that? And I don't get to do that. What's like, there was just a lot of confusion um, because some of the more affiliates or like, you know, people that would do reviews or hauls on YouTube would just be given a code just like the athlete and not have a retainer, but they would be working with, you know, as many brands as they wanted. We're not really tied to them. It's no big deal. Um, but yeah, it just led to confusion. And also it kind of led to, I feel like Alphalete just not really just kind of losing its identity a little bit, honestly. And, um, too many phases to like, just who, like, who is an Alphalete athlete? Like, what is, what, like, what is, what is the brand kind of, what, what is the direction? Right. It's all right, man. And that is just like the truth. Um, and damn, damn, look at my back. It looks pretty good. Okay. A little physique update there. Um, be sure to give the video a thumbs up if you guys are enjoying this talk and, you know, watching this and stuff. But, uh, yeah, so what we did is we, as of this year, like the last few weeks, it's probably also adds to the stress um, and lack of videos, but we have been trimming down our athlete list. We are now down to under 40 official athletes that are working with our brand um that are like die hard love the brand here for the brand here to stay it's like and those are the people that, and that fuck with us and like those are the people that we like we stand behind and we are going to build i want to like we need to go back to the feel that we were that's the truth and like that's one step in doing that uh which is really exciting um i'm Every time I, I make like a big decision, like one similar to this, um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's scary. It, there's pushback. It's like, obviously a lot of people that even if they were like performing well and we're not working with them anymore, we took their code away. Like it does suck. There's a lot of conversations that suck to have. And like, you know, it's, it's tough conversations and it's not, they're not relationships that I always like want to say goodbye to. Um, but at the end of the day, I think brand identity is everything. And I think if you dilute it too much and you let it kind of go, it can just, it can feel scary. Um, so step one of kind of honing it in, honing it back and like getting just like reprogramming Alphalete, I guess, um, was the trim down. So that did happen. Part two is any, you know, additional talent that we want to bring, uh, which is somebody I'm actually going to introduce to you right now. Introducing Alphalete's newest athlete, Nick Walker, uh, 2021 or 2022 Arnold champ placed top three at the Olympia in 2022 tore his hamstring in 2023, right before the Olympia and will be competing at this year's Olympia and athletes going damn right. We're going, it's going to be fucking dope. We're going to be supporting. Um, they call him the mutant. How dope is that? I wish they call me the mutant, <laughs> but, um, one more like kind of marketing and I'm going to leave it at this, leave the video at this. But, um, whenever I talk about this stuff, I feel like other people are like going to copy, <laughs> like your direct competitors are going to copy like what I'm doing. And, but it's kind of like what it is. I'm pulling back our spend on, uh, our ad spend, like drastically, like 70%, um, like all at once, because I feel that the, and anyone who's like running at, it's very hard because there's no way to actually tell distinctly, like how, if an ad is actually directing to a sale, because uh, like 
it's very inflated the number essentially because when you inflate them it's when it shows you a number you know like you could have seen the ad but then you don't know if you know that person has also seen uh you know one of our athletes videos that inspired him to buy the brand support the brand like there's a lot of variables that can alter that data and so those and I just feel like it's getting, it is getting more and more and more expensive to actually like see those conversions, which though the numbers that we're seeing aren't terrible, it's just like we're spending just so much compared to previous years. Um, and yeah, it's just, I think that that method of marketing is just what that bucket, I should say, is one that I want to hone back for at least two months here. Um, really this whole year, but two months, cause it could, you know, really impact our daily sales, um, and cause them to start like declining. But I feel like they're not, I feel like that spend and conversion is so inflated that by cutting it down, um, we're actually going to get a, you know, see, I, I think like no impact, honestly, um, or like a 10% impact, something very minimal. And I think that by honing in the athletes and getting that like much tighter family feel, um, we have a birthday campaign coming up here. So in like a week, we have um, every athlete <laughs> coming to Houston uh, to be all together and just like build the community back up, um, which is going to be super dope. And I feel like that marketing coming in, right, which actually is costing us less than it did to have like, or about the same, I guess, to have um, our really it is the same are now trimmed down 40 versus like the 120. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to like, just put the faces to the brand and like have it stop switching around so much, you know? Um, and I'm excited to more so like when I'm living this new life, quote unquote, in this, like this new me, this more calm, like I'm able to be back in the front. I feel like by via, like my Mia, via Juan, Harry, like I'm able to like really focus on making videos, making content and being an athlete like from the athlete side and you know you'll see like code guzman you'll see like all the photos we're doing like all that work that we're doing it's athlete yeah but it's athlete like on via like our little little team and it's it's really fun um and then athlete the, the the campaign is going to be like that also that's still if i'm ever when i'm in those it's still like it's completely separate and like instead of me being CEO, CEO, I'm able to, I'm like, I can't be that athlete. I can't be a good, um, influencer. I can't be a, a, that, but I'm able to like, I feel like I'm kind of making no sense, but, um, that's really it guys. That's, um, all I really wanted to talk to y'all about. So I am going to let a clip play here, um, about some rocket opportunity. And like, this is a good opportunity, like that you're about to hear because trimming down buckets, um, and dollar spend in like paid advertisement, Google and Facebook, all that kind of stuff. Like we open up this budget to organic influence, organic reach, uh, organic creators, like, uh, and we can open up this budget to things like this rockets thing. Um, so be sure to comment down below and like, let me know what y'all think. Like, um, I would say, I don't talk about how much the rocket steel would cost or anything like that, but, um, do you guys think it would be worth it? Do you guys like think, I'm making the right call. Um, and what do y'all think about trimming the team down? Comment below. Be sure to go pick up some stuff for the drop. The new three pillar tank is honestly like my favorite lightweight tank ever. And peace. Okay. What do y'all think of the sunglasses? Like, don't lie. What do you think? Because it was just very sunny on the way on the drive over here. So I keep these. They're yellow. I've never worn like a color lens before but let me know what you think. These are for movement. I honestly don't even know if I still have a code with them, <laughs> but if I do, I'll put it on the screen so you guys can uh, get a pair of these. But I just pulled up to Justin's house, Justin Betancourt, um, the guy who did my documentary with me, the guy who's been doing a majority of the Alfle video campaigns for like years. You guys know Justin um, and his wife is Kirby. She's coming home from work right now from the office. We were just there. Um, we had a re really interesting meeting today. Let me talk about that before I talk about where I'm at now. Um, with It was me, Kirby, who is our head of marketing, Melissa, our head of women's design, and Kevin, our head of men's design, and myself. So us four, 
uh, met because Kirby has been um, entertaining meetings uh, and kind of getting the just a lot of the questions that we've already sort of had answered and we really use this meeting to kind of get a full grip on what the next step is but that is a collaboration with the Houston Rockets um, so Al Fleet you know being an official sponsor of Houston Rockets like what does that look like and what is in yeah, it's very it is expensive but I mean it's expensive if you're looking at the the point blank like will this investment make me direct money no um or very very unlikely right but like doing maybe a pop you know clothes and stuff like that but the bigger picture the bigger messaging like the opportunity to get you know Alfleet custom collaborative pieces design pieces onto you know um like the the cheer the cheer team the dance team the um the, the players like in you know preseason maybe camps or things like that and just like and even getting them like gift bagged like Alfleet to just see you know if they if put, putting the product and and Alpha Land like our entire gym just on their radar um, by giving them a few items and just like letting them organically if they tend or if they do put the joggers on um, you know at home or whatever then they end up like like you know maybe like the brand or just you know want to come check out the gym with one of their crews like and actually if we do the deal with them um, it is it would be part of the deal to do a few events per year um, like at Alpha Land so pretty much just like being honest right now we're, we're figuring uh, my, my biggest concerns are one being sure that we can get some like our content team or dedicated people like sent to um, a lot of these like games and, and just allowed access to capture the content. So we're actually gar guaranteed we're like gonna get the content that we would like to showcase. Um, even if it's like the the dancers like getting you know the pregame like warm up outfits, sweatsuits like pulling up, how are they dressed, the fits like, and you know eventually getting the opportunity to mix in Alfleet um, pieces with the players um like the basketball players will be just huge and like we can even if we do this deal we'll be allowed to do um like our basketball courts at Alfland we'll be able to do the Houston Rockets you know we incorporate like official Alfleet Rockets um like collaborative stuff which I really think the biggest value there um of the entire opportunity and sponsorship would be not just like Alfleet directly but almost and I don't know how like what the lines are like, how defined these lines are, but between, you know, Alpha Land also being able to become a sponsor, Summer Shredding also become a an official sponsor of the Rockets and kind of getting those names, like, you know, it'll be played in the arena. We'll have opportunity to do like, um, like during halftime, we'll have an Alpha video playing with, with the, with the um, cheer team, like design merch or not, not even merch, but like uniforms and outfits, like custom pieces for, um, you know, to be worn, and uh, it, it could lead to a lot of cool opportunities. So I'm um, just kind of keeping you guys updated. That is in the talks right now, and we want to be, like, exclusive with them, too. That's another big one. Um, so getting content shot, you know, from via our lens um, to some capacity, of course. Um, yeah, and being sure we get the events, uh, you know, that are a few times a year. Obviously, I would ideally plan those around summer shredding times so when we already have like mass groups or you know events we can just sort of tag uh tag that along you know brackets are here as well meet the players um lessons with the players drills with the players free throw shooting competitions all that kind of stuff and i think that like the big overall play if i can com kind of combine the company is in sort of benefiting from it you know and of course looking at cost and what that looks like and what the what like defining what those lines are this could be a very very beneficial play um for us to do and be kind of honestly like make houston our freaking home and make everyone aware that alfley is here we we claim houston this is our city we are here for the city um i'm born and raised right down the street here in missouri city which is on the highway here to houston um and we always will have our footmark here right so um, I think it's time we take a step like this and officially like bring 
something of the caliber of like the Houston Rockets into finding ways to start working and associating with, you know, it's wild to be talking about, to be honest. <laughs> but um, I'm about to head into Justin's house today. They, they just got a new puppy, uh, Leah. So we're going to go meet her. And yeah, she just wanted to kick it with some friends, honestly. What's up, man? What up? Welcome to my crib. Where, where is she? Oh, oh she's literally right behind me. I think she went to follow her. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. She's so perfect, man, my God. Literally Jay says that all the time. Yeah. I'm like, why is she so She'll perfect? She'll just like sit and I'm like, she's perfect. Oh my gosh. She's only 10 weeks old? 10 and a half weeks yeah. old. You forgot where's the freaking camera. There we go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> she's just so We're also so, so happy, so busy. Oh man, I forgot how hard puppies are. Yeah. They're, you gotta watch them all the time. It's exhausting. Yeah. But she's really good. Yeah, she's for a puppy. She's, she's really, really calm. Like, That's all Rome, she does. Rome was crazy. Look at her little paws just like dangling. Yeah. <laughs> That's literally... And she loves to snuggle. Like she wants to just be held all the time. That's literally all she does is just snuggle. It's so good she has Rome to like grow up with and like observe. Yeah. He doesn't like it though. No? <laughs> he's, he's not aggressive or anything, but like she'll like go up and try to play with him and he looks like looks at her and He's jealous. Like, <laughs> he's jealous that we're giving oh. her all the attention. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. So just like soft and like flimsy almost, yeah. right? Just like molds to your, your shape. Oh. <laughs> Thumbnail. I had <laughs> no, I can't clickbait. I held Kirby's puppy. <laughs> I held the bed. <laughs> oh, you're so cute. Oh.